This is Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com at the 2017 Cars for Critters show at the AACA uh, Museum in Hershey, Pennsylvania. It's a great show at a great museum. We're speaking uh, with Paul who has owned Actually, this Nash Healy has been in his family since 1958. It's a 53 Nash Healy. Paul, you were saying uh, that your father bought this car? My father bought this car from the Nash dealer in Middletown, Pennsylvania, in 1958 as a rough use car. Uh -huh. It had 50 some thousand miles on it at the time. Wow, that's the a lot for that. The front bumper was not there, uh, the grill emblem was missing, the engine had a knock, the, trend, the upholstery was in pretty bad shape. It was just really rough. You were saying that it might have been raced? I think it was probably, by the looks of it, you know, it had dings all over the place. It was probably done back then, a lot of weekend competitions for sport cars. That's probably what it's also. Uh -huh. And if you ever saw the movie Sabrina and some of the old movies, People didn't use the doors. They were always just jumping over the door and landing in the seat. Yes. Well, the seat tracks were all broke up and all, so apparently that happened to it too. So there was lots of uh, minor damage to it. In well, this the, was a very expensive car when new. Yes, it was. In 1953, it was sold for right at $6,000 because of the logistics involved. In this During this time, the whole running gear, the charging system, engine, transmission, brakes, everything was loaded up from Nash and sent by boat to Italy, uh, England. Mm -hmm. The whole That was all, Donald Healy turned it into a rolling chest. The engine was installed, the drums were put on, the backing plates, it would roll. They loaded it up again, sent it to Italy. Pina Farina hand built a body around the engine. The engine was still in there when it was built. And this is all seams everywhere. There's a seam down through here, and a seam across here, and all handmade. And so when they finished it, they loaded it up again and they sent it back across the They were never sold in Europe. They were only sold out of Nash dealers in uh, the United States. So this was uh, mainly a draw to draw people into the Nash showroom. Mm -hmm. Now, $6,000 was more than the Cadillac at that point. Yes, because of all because of all the handwork to build the body mm -hmm. and because of the logistics of sending things across Back the ocean twice. Now, these are, uh, I know they came in both aluminum and steel. 51 was a different body, pretty much the same frame and all. Mm -hmm. uh, a little smaller engine because that was his big engine. They always put the biggest ambassador engine that they had. It's an ambassador six owner. But they, the first year was all an aluminum body and it was based on the Healy Silverstone that Donald Healy already had. Mm -hmm. The CEO of Nash wanted something with more sex appeal. Mm -hmm. So Healy submitted a prototype as did Pina Farina, because Pina Farina was already working with Nash designing their other cars. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they accepted the Pina Farina, the Pina Farina uh, prototype, and this came about. So that's Nash Ambassador engine. Look at that, the twin side draft Strombergs. Uh, no, they're, these are uh, Carter YHs. Oh, okay, very good. That early one had uh, SU. Uh, oh, really? Well, of course, Don, Donald Healy, of right. course. And even some of the later ones, but all the, from 53, the 53s and 54s all had the YHs. And there were different configurations. Some of the carburetors were more like beside one and six. Some were more like between two and five. Uh, this is the last one, there were three and four. Now, I noticed the generator has a drive off of it. Is that for the power steering? That's the water pump. Water pump, yep, okay. Kind of the Achilles heel of this engine. Ah, yeah, that's wild. Yep. That is wild that they didn't put it on the uh, yep, actual... Yep, none of this, uh, that was a throwback from Nash from the 20s. Okay, jeez. And in 56 was the last of the side drive water pumps. Unbelievable. It, at least you have the uh, oil filter. Was that uh, optional? Yes, the oil filter was optional. Mm -hmm. There was no options for the Healy. I mean, that would have been something that the dealers put on uh, okay. or the owner. But all the Healy's came with overdrive and things like that. The only options you could get were things that the dealer, they all shipped from Italy without a radio. 
but they were configured to accept the 1951 Nash radio. Yeah, because the European radios are different than the American. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they didn't bother, they didn't try to put them in, so it was up right. to the person. Uh, you could get the wire hubcap options, uh -huh. and a few of them they did, they made real wire wheels available. Were they the uh, Kelsey Hayes or were they the Italian Baranis? Oh, they were American. American, probably yeah. a Kelsey Hayes. I now, know that for sure. uh, the contemporaries, of course, were the uh, Kaiser Derens and the Italias, the Hudson Italias. That's correct. So it's interesting and in the, the 50s with the and American. Nash would claim to be the first American sport car. Other people would just part there. There were some Crosleys in there and things like that, but Nash touted themselves as the first American sport car. Other people would say, well, no, it wasn't true American, but. It's, well, yeah, you're going with that. An arguing point. Oh, that's for yeah. sure. Now, uh, what are you running for transmission? Uh, Borg Warner Overdrive. The whole running gear is completely Nash. Okay. And the shifters on the floor? Let's take a look at the Probably interior. Probably the first floor shift conversion because it's a regular transmission, but right. they cast and made their own floor shift. Very and nice. There it is. That's the three speed with OD. Three speed with overdrive. And it's. Uh, the speedometer was converted from uh, the uniscope, that yes. speedometer on the dash, so the, the gauges and all are the same as, as a regular Nash, except it's a 140 mile an hour speedometer. And then the tack was just made, it's a, it's a Stuart Warner tack to match the, uh, to match the other the speedometer. Ah, that is beautiful. That is some car. I like the details. Look at this. My wife did all the upholstery work. Oh, really? She did, and then we did all the door pit. The only thing we farmed out on this whole car mm -hmm. was the seat itself we did not do. Right. The top, and I took it through Prime twice, but I had to, a, a friend of mine did the final top. The final. Okay. But she did all the, the door work. And, uh, she is. Carpeting and things like that. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I did all the mechanics. Of course, Pinferina on through. What is that for the jack? That's for the jack. Okay. And then I notice also you have another point that down would, there. You would take that little cover off and you would put a punch up there to knock the bottom hinge pin out so you could take the door off. Because once there's no adjustments on the doors, the hood, or anything like that, as they hand built the car, uh -huh. they fit it and welded things. And wow. that was it. That's the Italian way, is all, mm -hmm. all remarkable. Now is the um, antenna uh, hydraulic, um, that's pneumatic, electric? electric? Mm -hmm. Very and good. that's borderline whether that's completely legitimate or not, but it's close. Okay, very good. Now I noticed the uh, air vents in the uh, rear fins. They were to simulate, they were never made functional, but they were to simulate cooling for the rear brake drums. Gotcha. It was just a styling touch. Now, were these cars successful on the tracks, on SCCA? Yes. yes, they were. They ran at Le Mans, and that's hence the name, the Le Mans engine up there. Ah. And they finished third overall uh -huh. in 53, I believe. Wow. And there was only thing that, that, I think there was two Mercedes that beat them, but for a small country, a small country car with Donald Healy's small company, it was pretty astounding. That is, that truly is, especially third overall. Yeah. So they finished third overall and may have been best in class, but third overall. And with such humble bones, mm -hmm. if you shall. I love these uh, shock towers. Oh, gorgeous. Now that's the spare underneath the cover? Yes, it is. It's the spare tower. Very nice. Very nice. So what's the strangest thing that has happened to you with the heel? What's the strangest questions you've had? This should be good. You're probably getting them all. I, I get so many questions. I don't know what would be the strangest. I, I probably the number one question is, what's it worth? And I really have no idea. Well, no, no, because no. they're all over the board. You can find yeah, them on eBay. You can buy, and there. Are, sometimes they go for phenomenal prices. Sometimes they go pretty cheap. I yeah. Don't, you know, so it yeah. just, it all depends what, what somebody's in the mood How for. How many were made? Five hundred and six total. That includes the race car, the first 51s that were the different body, and there was at the end of 53 they made coupes, and in 54 they made 90 coupes, and that was the end of them. That was it. 
And now, was that because of the Italia that they want to continue with the Hudson, or they just because discontinued? Because there was two things happened. Uh, in 54, Nash merged with Hudson and formed American Motors. Correct. And they were, that was such a big logistics thing to have pull that off. Mm -hmm. They were really consumed by it. And George Mason, who was the CEO of Nash, died. And he was the big pusher of this car. Oh, okay. So with him passing away, and all the, the the hoopla involved with the merger and the change of, of uh, CEO and and that, all that this and like say they and I guess Healy was already starting to partner with Austin mm -hmm. because the first Austin Healys were coming out. Yes, so the uh, 100. It just kind of it was just time for it to fade away. At that yeah, point. I know Mason died in the uh, plane crash unexpectedly. No, he died of a heart attack. Heart attack, okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Romney took over. Yes, he did. Yes. Not Mitt, but Mitt's father. George. George. That's correct. Yes, yes. Oh, well, it all ties in. This is remarkable. Paul, I thank you so very much. Thank you. This is quite a car. We've seen it before on Northeast Wheels events. You see it again. Now we know the story behind this 53 Nash Healy. For more cool events like this, make sure you check northeastwheelsevents.com. SoutheastWheelsEvents.com and UKWheelsEvents.com. Paul, thank you so very, thank very you. much.